Well, good afternoon, CPAC. You know, Judicial Watch is your watchdog in Washington. Hillary Clinton knows who we are. President Trump knows who we are. I'm not sure what Joe Biden knows. But millions of patriots across the nation know and support our heavy lifting to expose and stop government corruption. Judicial Watch is famous for using the FOIA to figure out what the government is up to. No one has done more to uncover government corruption, from Benghazi to Clinton emails to Obamagate to the Biden family racketeering scandal. The rule of law protects the high and the low, but the corrupt deep state and its partisan allies would subvert the rule of law. They aimed high by targeting President Trump with illicit spying and contemptible abuses of his rights. President Trump is a crime victim. Who was behind the worst corruption scandal in American history? Obama, Biden, Comey, Brennan, you know the rest. And when Trump raised questions about this conspiracy and the Biden corruption, the corrupt D.C. establishment so panicked that they tried and failed to remove him from office with their first sham impeachment. Remember, the abuses of Trump are also about distracting, protecting Biden, Clinton, and other swamp leaders from accountability for any misconduct and crimes. So let's talk about the new president. No other president in recent American history has been so compromised by credible corruption allegations. There is significant evidence that directly impl implicates President Big Guy Biden in criminal activity tied to Hunter Biden's rackets in Ukraine and China and other countries. Big media and big tech, which, seems to be, which seem to be nothing more than left-wing advocacy groups, censored or covered this up for years and the Justice Department and the FBI, true to form, focused on protecting Biden while targeting Trump. When it comes to uncovering and exposing government corruption, the DOJ and FBI are part of the problem and have done more to undermine the confidence of the American people in the rule of law than just about anyone. Those institutions were irredeemably compromised under the Obama administration and they spent most of the Trump administration even, either trying to destroy Trump at the behest of the Clinton-Obama shift cabal or trying to cover up the real corruption that it should have pursued but never did. The failure of the Justice Department to hold any significant person accountable for Obamagate crimes is a scandal. Gosh, Biden is giving promotions to some of his Obamagate co-conspirators. John Durham was appointed almost two years ago, and there's been little evidence of a serious criminal investigation of those implicated in spygate abuses of Trump and other innocent Americans, such as General Flynn. And the FBI and the Justice Department had Hunter's laptop for years, but did nothing but protect the Biden clan. Why, for example, is there not yet a special counsel for Biden corruption? We had the corrupt appointment of Mueller to investigate non-crimes to harass President Trump, but nothing yet for President Biden. I call on the Justice Department to immediately appoint a special counsel to investigate Biden corruption. And let me say this to Special Counsel Durham, reports are nice, but prosecutions are better. Of course, Judicial Watch isn't waiting on a Biden special counsel or a Durham report. Judicial Watch first uncovered, nor, not Congress, not the dishonest media, that Hunter Biden flew to China at least five times while his father was vice president. A Judicial Watch federal lawsuit also uncovered that the Obama State Department noted that the Russians were trolling the, then Vice President Biden's anti-corruption activities in Ukraine because he was compromised by Hunter's Burisma corruption. And then, of course, there's the Obamagate scandal. Much of what we know about the Obama-Biden scandal is a result of our unrelenting lawsuits and pressure. Heck, who needs an IG when you have Judicial Watch?
and it was reconfirmed last year that targeting Trump was all about protecting over her emails. Even as her cronies and enablers are in the Biden White House, we're supposed to forget about the Clinton email crimes. Judicial Watch remembers, and America remembers and still wants justice. Hey, by the way, it's now official. We can impeach former presidents and government officials. So should we now impeach Obama, Hillary Clinton, Comey, Brennan, Susan Rice, and all the rest? And maybe we can have congressional impeachments. Schiff and Posey, Pelosi, Omar and Swawa. Of course, the Pelosi impeachments of President Trump are also about election interference. The left, with the help of their allies in big tech, want to be able to interfere with our elections and smear, jail, and censor anyone who objects. The left didn't want to remove Trump because he, quote, incited violence. He didn't, of course, you know that. They don't care about violence as they endorse and use it regularly. They wanted to abuse impeachment to undermine an effective leading opposition voice. The left used the pretext of COVID to rush through, sometimes contrary to law, long sought changes in election rules that saw tens of millions, millions of ballots and ballot applications being mailed to voters that are notoriously inaccurate. The tsunami of mail-in ballots conveniently led to chaos in many key states on election day. By the way, federal law sets an election day, not an election week or an election month or an election winter. <laughs> on election day, President Trump had the votes to win the presidency. These vote totals were changed because of unprecedented and extraordinary counting after Election Day. <laughs> Judicial Watch has long warned of the chaos and increased risk of fraud from recklessly mailing 100 million ballots and ballot applications. Our most recent research using data from just before the election revealed that 353 U.S. counties had 1.8 million more registered voters than eligible voting age citizens. In other words, the registrations of those counties, the registration rates of those counties, exceeded 100% of eligible voters. In Pennsylvania, our litigation to clean up dirty voting rolls there uncovered 800,000 extra names on the rolls. The, mal the maladministration of the elections, to put it charitably, undermined America's confidence in the fairness of our elections and has significantly weakened the Biden presidency. Let's be clear, the left ruined the election. How to fix this mess? Restore the rule of law on elections. One thing we aim to do is get the receipts on the 2020 election. Judicial Watch has 105 open record and Freedom of Information Act requests pending on the election. Another thing to do is to clean up the election rolls. Dirty voting rolls can mean dirty elections. A Judicial Watch federal lawsuit settlement is already resulting in LA County alone cleaning up to 1.6 million names from the rolls. It's just the tip of the iceberg, though. And we're in federal court now to clean up the rolls in Pennsylvania, Colorado, and North Carolina. And more lawsuits are coming, believe me you. Believe you me. <laughs> And let me be clear, in case I haven't been, voting by mail should generally be ended.
Vote by mail makes it nearly impossible to, de to detect or even to pretend to prevent fraud. This security gap undermines confidence in the elections. You know, unless you're putting your life on the line in Afghanistan or have some other emergency reason, the law should require you to vote in person. After your citizenship and eligibility have been verified, and after you show your secure photo ID. And no ballot harvesting. None. Let me say this. If elections are not secure and are, and are conducted in uh, violation of the Constitution, many Americans won't vote in them. Secure elections conducted according to law will increase voter turnout. Can't we have a debate on this? Can't we have a debate on this? Not if big tech gets its way. Big tech's ban of President Trump for his blowing the whistle on the election is all about helping the left. Neither Section 230 nor any other law allows big tech to lie to the public and shareholders about their dishonest censorship of conservative Americans. This is basic business fraud that should be investigated by law enforcement. But as the saying goes, you can trust the communists to be communists. Sure enough, communists and left partisans now seek to effectively criminalize those who advocate for free, fair, and secure elections. Big tech censorship of former President Trump and other conservative leading voices provides cover to the less broad governmental attack on the God-given rights of tens of millions of Americans. If you want an example of how the left views your First Amendment rights, take a look at the miles-long barbed wire fence around the U.S. Capitol. Don't worry, Judicial Watch has Congress covered. We sued the Pelosi Congress for Capitol riot emails and video. We want to know what Pelosi and Schumer are hiding about it. Speaking of fences and walls, let's talk about the border. Biden is seeking open borders amnesty by hook or by crook with zero regard for the public health and safety or, of course, the rule of law. Biden would nationalize sanctuary policies that are not only illegal but deadly dangerous. He's launched the most significant attack on immigration law in American history. I could think of an article or of impeachment or two for Biden's outright refusal to enforce the law against illegal alien criminals and his policies that aid and abet human smuggling and child trafficking at the border. Biden is worse than Obama on lawless executive amnesty and in just one month has caused a humanitarian and public health disaster on our Mexican, on our Mexican border. What should be done on that? End sanctuary policies, both nationally and locally. Judicial watches in court in California and Maryland to challenge sanctuary policies that abuse taxpayers and harm the public safety. And just say no to amnesty. Even talking about amnesty increases illegal immigration. You know, I, I've come up with a simple solution for the immigration crisis. I think President Trump knew this too. Enforce the law. And again, only citizens should vote. We should change the laws to require you to prove your citizenship in order to register the vote. Look, I know there are all these challenges, but there is a way forward for conservatives. Here's the truth. The Biden administration is corrupt, but weak. His, bar, his party barely controls Congress. President Biden has a personal corruption problems has obvious health challenges, must manage internal warfare between his party's corrupt corporate wing and its rising communists, and his moral claim on the presidency is rejected by a massive number of voters. But there are many loser Republicans who also have contempt for our concerns about swamp corruption, election integrity, our borders, and accountable and constitutional government. So it is Judicial Watch to the rescue. We know what to do. Sue them. Demand answers. Tell the truth. Protect citizens under the law. Defend the Constitution. Expose corrupt politicians of both political parties.
have to have a note to myself here, Sue Fauci again. As George Washington said, truth will ultimately prevail where pains is taken to bring it to light. Again, Judicial Watch is your watchdog in Washington. We go to bat for you. We represent you. We defend you. We fight for you in court against those who would deny Americans their divine birthright, the rule of law. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. glad you're talking about it, a special counsel. Somebody has to look into Joe Biden, because a lot of us don't think that justice is going to be done. We all know he's got serious, serious issues. Yeah, and, and uh, most of Washington, D.C. has been silent on the elephant in the room, which is the fact that Joe Biden's been compromised as a result of his and his son's activities with China and in Ukraine and other countries. And, uh, you know, President Trump had a special counsel appointed over nothing. Basically, uh, fake uh, news and, f and false information put out there by Hillary Clinton. Here we already have an FBI investigation separately into uh, Hunter's tax situation and the lease. Uh, under the rules of the Justice Department, you're supposed to have a special counsel appointed if there's a conflict of interest and the public interest demands it. How has there not been a special counsel appointed? Frankly, one should have been appointed under the Trump administration. It is astounding. They're getting away with it. There is almost no mainstream media pressure here. Um, although from time to time I hear that the far left inside the administration, people who like Kamala Harris perhaps more than Joe Biden, may want to uh, see an investigation into old Joe after all at some point. Yeah, but, you know, that's politics. You know, I think, uh, at least from Judicial Watch's perspective, the question is, is there significant evidence of criminal activity by Joe Biden or people close to him and his family specifically that warrant um, a Justice Department investigation? The answer is yes, Hunter Biden's under investigation. There's other evidence impl implicating Joe Biden in uh, the issues Hunter Biden's being investigated for. Uh, the Justice Department should appoint a special prosecutor there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And uh, the fact that D.C. hasn't talked much about it, frankly, says more about the corrupt allied media of Joe Biden and uh, their political handmaidens in Congress than it does uh, about the need for justice here and to reassure the American people uh, that Joe Biden isn't above the law. By the way, I think Hunter Biden's book comes out next month. Do you have any idea what he does day to day? He's 51 years old, I think. Uh, he still owns a big chunk of that uh, hedge fund that has those ties to China. What, how does he pass the time? Well, it's a good point you raise, Greg. He's still, impl he's still involved with China. Uh, supposedly he's painting now. Uh, you know, he, he is, you know, he's got these challenges or he's had these challenges of drug addiction and such, I understand. Uh, but, you know, having reviewed some of the emails that have been made public, uh, he knows what he's doing and he know what and he knew what he was doing when he was conducting this, this, uh, these rackets in Ukraine and China and uh, the emails and other testimony um, from people, his former business partners implicate Joe Biden directly in all this. Was Joe Biden getting the benefit of this deal, or was Joe Biden uh, the beneficiary of bribes indirectly by these Chinese and other entities uh, who were taking care of his son and indirectly taking care of him? Look, we rip on the mainstream media all the time, um, but they do have the resources to bring to the table, if they wanted to, a serious investigation of uh, Hunter Biden. Um, this is a great story. You know some reporters down there. I mean, what excuse do they come up with? Those who are paid to be investigative reporters who are full time on this kind of stuff in the Trump world are just looking the other way. They know it's a good story. What is their excuse? 
Well, remember, when they first were talking about the story, they suggested it was Russia disinformation. So it's kind of hard for them to go back and, and, and go over this again. Uh, they were scooped by Rudy Giuliani and the New York Post. Uh, so they're embarrassed by all of this. And plus, they're rooting for Joe Biden. They don't want to disrupt a, an administration that they politically support. You know, Greg, the media has just been, uh, you know, it's always been bad in terms of bias. Uh, but now they're just completely uh, advocacy in terms of politics. And on issues like this, politics always comes first. We've been quite conspicuous here. This is an opinion show. We lean one way, and uh, you know, I support President Trump. I like conservative policies, and I like his style. One thing about reporters down there, though, even the investigative ones, they spend so much time on the phone, um, you know, just kind of trading insults all day long, and not as much digging as was happening uh, not too long ago. All right. Well, we're glad you're on the case. Thank you very much, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you.